what's going on beautiful delivery is Tracy and today we're going to be talking about corset 2019 if you've clicked on this video but you haven't seen my other ones I've done all the other colors in the set so far and there will be another video coming out later today on multicolored artifacts and lands but if you're new to my channel I haven't seen these videos before basically how I do these is I talk about these cards with a limited mindset I don't talk about standard I don't talk about modern I don't talk about any of that sort of stuff all I'm pretty much focusing on is how are these cards going to be used in draft and um, sealed, pretty much. Um, my, my quick overview of green, there's some great stuff, as there's always is in, in each of the colors. I think it's the weakest color, in my personal opinion. I just, like, as I was going through this, um, if you follow watch my other videos, um, it kind of goes like I felt like I talked a lot about like white cards and like all and like black cards. Uh, blue I actually really like, which normally blue always feels like the weakest color to me in my opinion in limited. Um, and red cards, you know, I'm really hyped on that. Red has so many burn spells, like there's so many great things. Green to me, just I don't know what it is about it. I just feel like it's not fully there for me. Like there's some of course solid cards. There's some really great bombs that I'm gonna talk about, but. A lot of the cards that I was looking at were just felt kind of mediocre. I think it's going to be a decent support color, especially with these cards in particular that I'm talking about. But I, I, tr I think trying to make like a mono green or mostly green deck, I, I think it's just not going to be very great in my opinion. Now, that's just me speculating it as I see the cards. Like I always do these videos and sometimes cards I don't mention tend to be really great. Like I, I pinpoint the cards that I think are going to be really solid and I kind of pass on the ones that I'm like, eh, this card's not great or it's not notable enough for me to really talk about it, if that makes sense. And I felt like a lot of the cards I was like, I don't even really want to mention it. I'm just not super enthusiastic. However, on the flip side, there are cards that I sometimes talk about that don't end up being great at all. And like, I just think that's that's just speculation. That's just me saying these are cards I think are good or not, if that makes sense. So the first card I want to talk about is amazing. Bomb.com, pack one, pick one, -able. no questions, is Vivian Reed. She's awesome. She reminds me a lot of, what is the Green Planeswalker? Um, Fraylis. She reminds me a little bit of Fraylis, especially her minus. Um, or I would say her minus just reminds me of Fraylis. Anyways, so she starts off at five loyalty for five mana. Um, her uptick is you look at the top four cards of your library, you may reveal a creature or a land, and you put one of those into your hand, and then you just put the rest of the bottom. I love this little bit of card advantage. You get to look at four cards, which is awesome. And especially, too, with, like, a 40-card deck, and you're landing this on later stages of the game, like, you're looking so far into your deck. You're probably looking for, like, your late-game bombs or things like that. I like it because you're gonna, in limited, you're gonna be running, like, a ton of creatures, most likely. So this helps get you to your your late-game creatures. Um, but it also gets you a land if you just don't find anything. Your deck is really not gonna be full of, like, instants and sorcery, so the chances of you not getting anything with this card are really limited. Like, you're gonna get some value off of that. Her minus three is really good. Um, I don't know how useful the first two artifacts or enchantments are going to be that much. I feel like people don't typically run those in limited, at least that I've seen. I feel like artifacts and enchantments tend to be, unless they're really, really solid, they tend to be kind of underwhelming. Um, but then the creature with flying, I noticed there's a lot of times really good creatures with flying in the set. But I like, but I like this because like, and if you don't have another way to deal with it, you can just minus her. But like, you don't have to, which I like. It's just you know, you can just keep upticking her and there's really no downside. And then her minus is, I mean, really just game over. Um, minus eight, you get an emblem with creatures, get plus two, plus two, have vigilance, trample, and indestructible. Reminds me a lot of the Elizabeth Sun's champion ult. Um, again, I think if you get this off, I, I really foresee you just winning unless you have like no board, which I feel like the chance of that happening are pretty slim. Um, yeah, she's just all around really, really amazing. Um, very excited to see um, this card in the set. The next card I want to talk about is Vine Mare. I've been really into the horse, um, I don't know like what it called, like the group, like they, they have this where they, they'll do like a card and then they'll make like it in all the colors. I can't think of a word that like classifies that, but I really like this. This card's really solid. I think one of the best mares, um, or the horses in the, um, set. So it's, uh, four mana for a five, three hex proof. This card is really really solid i like it a lot um it can be a black by black creatures but whatever um i just think this card is really really good it's pretty straightforward i like it though big body and it's only four mana it's got hex proof like card's great 
Okay, cards, I I don't really know how I feel about this card. I mean, I like it, obviously I'm talking about it, but uh, Thorn Lieutenant. This card's kind of weird. Um, I, I feel like this, the first ability, honestly, is really not crazy strong, which I know sounds weird, like, why are you mentioning this card if you're not, like, all for it? Like, I, I feel like a lot of times, like, someone's gonna target your thing, and it's just gonna die. Like, you're gonna get, like, a 1-1 one, one out of it, so, like, I'm not really talking about this card for the first ability. Like, I guess you can combat that with, like, a pump spell or something like that if they have, like, a deal X damage to your creature and you could just pump it. And it's like, okay, but, like, how many of those are you gonna have in your deck? So, realistically, I don't know how much, like, that ability is gonna be useful, but really, honestly, why I'm kind of talking about that card, I think you could really have just eliminated that ability and then just made this like an uncommon and then just gave it the second ability and I would have been okay with it. Um, it's a lot of mana to pump it. It is six mana and I understand that, but honestly you have to keep in mind that limited's really slow so you can get to late stages of the game and then you can just pump this thing. Um, if you do happen to have 12 mana sitting around and nothing to do with it and your opponent decides to not block and they have, they're all tapped out, you can just pump this thing and make it uh, super big. Um, I'm not like in love, infatuated with this card. I do think that it is pretty solid and going to be good for limited, mainly for the second ability. I really don't see the first ability being very useful. Like you may get like one, one, one out of it. I, I don't foresee your opponent like you having just so many pump spells. Like I guess the idea is like they can target it and then you can make it bigger, but then it's like, but is, I don't know, like, I'm just, like, I get it, I'm just not, like, in love with it, but I do think it is pretty okay. I feel like I'm not making sense. Hopefully I am. Um, okay, the next card, this, this name, honestly, like, is so long and it bothers me. Gore Claw Terror of Qual Sisma. Why did that need to be so long? I don't understand. I think this is, like, a Yu-Gi-Oh card name. It just seems so long to me and unnecessary. Anyways, uh, it's for mana for a 4-3. Creatures you cast with power four or greater cost two less to cast. Now that in and of itself is a really sweet ability. However, not really why we're here. Um, whenever this guy attacks, each creature you control with power four or greater gets pulls almost one of trample on the turn. This is amazing. This is such a solid rare. I really like it a lot. I think it's gonna be really, really busted and limited. The first ability, you know, if you have a couple of things with power four or greater, yeah, sure, that's great. This is really great in late stages of the game. It's really good to cast on turn four because then on turn five, you can potentially you know have something cost less you could potentially do in late stages of the game two really big threats on the same turn because they each cost two less which is awesome so you do your whole thing and what I really like about this is that if you don't really have that many things like you're gonna have a couple of things I'm assuming that you know have po power like four or greater so you're gonna get some value so you're gonna get like some value out of that but like the last ability what I really like about it is like this guy just gets big so for four mana you make it a 5-4 which is really really good and it's got trample overall I think this card is really really solid I like it a lot for limited okay uh-huh I'm really excited about this card we have hungering hydra okay uh I love hydras like I, I just think they're really, really good. And what I really like about them is they're like the perfect mid-range card. You can cast this guy on turn four, but you can also cast him on like turn 15 and you're like super hyped on that because like this thing's gonna be huge. Okay, ATVs with X counters on it depending on how much you pay into it. And it can't be blocked by more than one creature. And then whenever it's dealt damage, you just put that many plus and plus no counters on it, which reminds me a little bit of Vigor, not as good as Vigor, but like still really, really solid. This card can just get like super big. I like it a lot. It puts them in a weird position with blocking because they can only block. They can't be blocked by more than one creature, which is really good. Um, overall, I think this card is really solid and I like it a lot. Okay. I mean, honestly, I had to talk about Gigantosaurus. Like, I had to talk about this because, like, guys, it's a 5 mana 10 10. Who cares that it's vanilla? It's a 5 mana 10 10. Your opponent doesn't really want to, like, waste a kill spell on this, but they probably have to because, like, they're not going to really want to set up blocks to block 10 of your thing, or they're just setting up a chump block, and that just really feels bad. And you just keep swinging with this thing, and if you manage to give it trample somehow, like, this card is just really, really busted. Like,. It makes me really happy. Also too, it's like five mana. It's, yes, it's all that green, but like, who cares? Like you're playing limited, you're probably playing two colors, you may be playing three colors, but you're just splashing for a third. Like, 
casting this is probably just not going to be an issue. You're going to be running so many basics and stuff, like whatever. This card's really good. I like it a lot. And just flavor, like, it's just so funny. Okay, um, this is a reprint, I'm pretty sure, of Palaka Worm. This card's sweet. Okay, it's 7 mana for a 7-7 seven, seven Trample. Like, that's already, like, a great body. You gotta stop there. In ATBs, you just gain 7 life. Like, what? This is, that, that's great. You gotta stop there. However, when it dies, you draw a card. This is, like, really, 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 really awesome. It reminds me of my homeboy, Thrag Tusk, a little bit. I love this card. This card just, you know, really good. Okay, then we have, um, Garapur Guide. So, funny story, um, I, I use Mythic Spoiler, and accidentally, the, the person has the text to the right of the card as Garapur Aethergrid, and I looked at the name, and I looked at the card, and I said, this card's not red, this card doesn't do that, and I realized that someone accidentally used the text of Garapur Aethergrid on this, and I got really confused. <laughs> Anyways, I think this card is pretty sweet. Um, so it's 3 mana for 3-2, which is pretty nice, I like that. And then, um, for 2 mana, it's not tapped, so you can do this, like, as many times as you have mana, which is really good. Target creature you control can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less this turn. This is a great mid-range card. You cast this card on turn 3, you're in a pretty good spot. You can have this guy chill around, attack if you can get in points of damage, or, I mean, you don't really want to block with this, it's a pretty good resource. But in late stages of the game, this is awesome. If you can, like, have nothing else to do with your mana, you could just dump some mana into this this guy. Um, this is really good too because you can like drop this guy on turn three and then have you know one of your dudes and then like the next turn if you have nothing else to do for like four mana because sometimes like it happens like that right like sometimes you you doing your draft and you only have like two cards that are four mana for example and so like you kind of don't really have any other cards you're waiting for your curve you have like five drops and stuff in your hand and things like that. This is a really good thing to do like on turn four because you like have access to that mana and you're like cool you know swing in with my dude and you all you have are like these little dudes at that point which is really good um yeah i like this card a lot i think it's pretty good okay then we have vigilant bay loth uh this card is super straightforward there's not a whole lot to say it's a five mana five five vigilance great body i think this card's great uh really solid uncommon that's that's pretty much it okay then we have droid of the cowl um it's just a mana dork it's also common you're gonna see these flying around a ton and it's just a one three so it's you know a little bit harder to like kill i don't know red's got like all these kill spells and stuff like that but um yeah this card's great okay uh the next card how many times is colossal dreadmaw gonna be reprinted i really i need to know like someone at Wizards of the Coast was just like, hey, you know what card needs to be reprinted? Colossal Dreadmar for the 15th time. I, I honestly, like, there's so many times where I just want to be at Wizards of the Coast and be like, why? Can you please explain this logic? Like, I'm not mad about it. I'm just like, I need to know, like, what is going in the minds. And people authorize this. Like, someone, like, someone said this and then everyone else was like, yeah, that card definitely needs a reprint. Like, what? I don't get it. I'm like, I blows my mind. With all that being set aside, though, this is a really good card. Um, this is a card that's going to be flown around the table, especially because it's a common. I think people are just super sick of seeing this card, but like, this is a really good card. It honestly doesn't look like anything fancy. It's not. It doesn't have to be. It's just a six mana six six with trample. But like, who cares? This is just a really great card. Yeah. Still, if, if, if you know any details about this card, I, I, inquiring minds need to know. I need to know. Please tell me. Please. Okay, then we have Gast Bark Twins. This is another just, Green has just like big stompy dudes in this, I, which I like. I think that's like really good. Okay, so it's 7 mana, 7-7 seven, seven Trample, which is good. Reminds me of Colossus, Colossal Dreadmaw, which we literally just talked about. Uh, however, it can block an additional creature each combat. So I like this guy, it's kind of a little awkward, like someone is saying in the comments that it should have Vigilance, which I can kind of agree with, but I think that'd be really busted if it had Vigilance, like if you took away Trample and gave it Vigilance, I don't know, I just think that would be like really stupid, I don't, I, I don't, I don't know, I think giving a Trample is balanced because like you're in a situation where like you could attack with it, but like you can just have it as a blocker, like if you're really desperate, like being able to block that and spread out 7 points of damage is really good, um, I do like this card, I think it's good. Okay, and the last card um, is Rabid Bite. I think one of my issues too with green is I feel like there's not a lot of removal. Like I feel like we typically see more cards like Rabbit Bite, like 
fight cards or like things like that I feel like there's not as many which is one reason why I think it's weak I think another thing too that kind of um I get that green doesn't have flying but I feel like the red dragons are just so much more attractive than a lot of these big green, green creatures you know what I mean like you have to think sometimes like if you're in a if you have a pack and you open it and there's like two like like you have like Lothalus the dragon queen and then you have colossal dreadmaw like obviously one's like um, I think Lothalus is a rare or a mythic I think she's a mythic like if you have her versus like colossal dreadmaw like obviously take Lothalus because like she's queen and like she does a ton of things I just I don't know I think like the flying I think is like a really good advantage that a lot of the other colors have that like green has never really had access to but I feel like the cards just aren't as powerful I think as some of the other things like I think balancing is one of the biggest issues in magic is like a lot of people will say that like oh like I feel like that in battle bond like I felt like the 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 decks were not balanced like I think one person had a way more powerful deck than your than your partner that was a little tangent but anyways the last card rabbit bite okay um yeah so it deals damage equal to its power to start creature you don't control so this is a removal spell or green's version of removal spells um yeah also uh why is the human biting the werewolf I'm really confused I feel like it should be the other way around I'm very confused on this card anyways um yeah this card's great it's a removal card it's also common which is great you have access to it that is it guys that is it we're talking about green i'd really like to know what you guys think about this color in particular um it's just kind of not doing it for me it really isn't so um i'd really like to know what you guys have to say leave me comments in the comment section below and i will talk to you guys in my last video in m19 i'm so sad it's over because <laughs> i really i like doing these videos they take a lot of time and they take a lot of editing but they're really fun and there's a lot of really awesome stuff in the set and it's cool like i kind of kill two birds with one stone like i do the videos for you guys but like i also get knowledge out of it of the set because i look at every single card i read every single card and i know what they all do so yeah that is it i will see you guys in my next video the last video for corset 2019